For some reason, my camera doesn't work. Hmm. Scott, can you hear me okay? I got you. Cool. Okay. In case anyone wants to come in. Um, We'll go ahead and start this meeting. Um, this is the Weber County Planning Division okay. Administrative Review Meeting Agenda. It's August 25th, uh, 2021, 4.01 p.m. Uh, my name is Steve Burton in the Planning Office. Rick Grover, the Planning Director, has asked that I sit in for him today. There are three items on today's agenda. Uh, the first item is AAE 202 21-07 consideration and action to extend an alternative access that would serve as three that would serve three residential lots um felix are you presenting this yes that's right well thanks for that introduction uh, this is a uh, an application for an alternative access this is uh, in, in preparation for uh, creating another subdivision lot um, in an on an ag parcel um, at approximately uh, 36, um, 50, or 585 South, 3600 West. The proposal is to extend the, the existing private road um, that's 20 feet wide, extend it to serve an additional uh, building lot. Um, so, Typical with with this type of uh, application, we look at ways in which this this proposal meets the criteria for an alternative access. Uh, we in this case we look at um, we look at the the parcel configuration, and we also look at. Um, some of the conditions that will be included with the approval. So the the, the first the criteria that that I found that this uh, proposal qualifies under is where it states 
it's been shown that it is infeasible or impractical to extend a street to serve such lot and parcel. And the reason it is impractical is because of property boundary conditions. Uh, the conditions of approval are um, stated a couple times in this report. I'll just read quickly that um, that the lot has legal access across this private drive. That's the first condition. The second condition of approval is that the landowner record um, or they basically record a covenant and they agree to pay a proportionate amount once the county deems it necessary to, to install that public road. Um, in this case, the, the specific agreement we had Alan Frankie into, um, there's, there's special language for this property because the property owner to the south, once that property owner to the south comes in to develop, that's what will trigger the um, those in the public right of way improvements to go in. And um, so, after reviewing the the criteria and conditions, staff recommends approval to extend this private right of way to serve a third lot. Um, with the conditions stated in the staff report, there's four conditions there. Um, and uh, yeah, that concludes what I had to say. Okay, thank you. So the lot, um, there's, this will just add one additional lot and there'll be three total that access. Yes. Okay. Um, I see Mr. Frankie's here. Do you have anything you'd like to say about this? No, I agree with Felix. You should approve this. Okay. Um, are there any, is there anybody from the public or uh, anybody on the Zoom call that would like to speak to this item? If so, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or anybody here. Okay. Yes, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, sure. if, if you go ahead and um, state your name and address and, and also know that um, this public comment isn't, um, we, we, we likely won't uh, answer your questions in this meeting, but we, we're happy to do so after this meeting if we can. But yes, please go ahead and, and state your name and, and, your, and your comments. Uh, this is uh, Jeff Wiener and I'm at uh, 1964 South Falcon Way. Um, diagonal to that property, actually across in certain places. Uh, the question I was having, uh, you, there's a uh, road going in uh, and you said it would access uh, three lots. I know we were had one lot uh, there, but uh, what, what other two lots would it access? Um, Jack, I, I, think, I think you're thinking this is, a, in, this is in Huntsville. This is not in Huntsville. This is in, uh, this is in Taylor. Oh, never mind. I, that must be another one that you're doing today. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments or any anything from anybody else? Okay. Seeing none, um, I will go ahead and approve this item based on um, Felix's presentation and on the items, uh, conditions, and findings that are listed in the staff report. So, we'll go ahead and move on to the next item. Uh, item number two, consideration and action on final plat approval of our land of our land subdivision consisting of one lot approx located at approximately 1628 South Tolliver Lane, Huntsville. The file number is UVB 060121. Scott Perks, are you presenting this item? I am, yep. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. So this is a one lot subdivision uh, located off of the existing Tolliver Lane, which is a private uh, access easement for a couple of lots um, off of Old Snow Basin Road. Um, it's in the Forest Valley 3 zone, uh, about 6.2 acres in size. <clears throat> this particular applicant already went through the alternative access exception process, um, which was uh, granted as about four months ago uh, to use Tolliver Lane as primary access. 
the proposed lot meets the zoning width and area for the FV3 zone. Um, and so by zoning standards, it is compliant. Um, culinary water is gonna be provided by a private well and the applicant has provided a driller start card, which was the requirement um, in the subdivision ordinance at the time that the application was submitted. Uh, so they do have that well permit ready to go. <clears throat> and they also have exchange details as shown in the staff report for water rights being uh, diverted to that, uh, to that well. Um, the staff report does go through some math on how much water is allowed to be used for culinary purposes um, and how much is used or allowed to be used for secondary purposes. Um, our new ordinance for water um, requires that we, um, we calculate that and we record a covenant on the property to indicate how much water is uh, allowed to be used for irrigation or landscaping. Uh, so that is detailed in the staff report. Of course, the applicant's always welcome to secure more water rights and then can increase the amount. But at the time of subdivision, uh, they do have a limitation based on the amount of water brought to the project. Uh, sanitary sewer is being um, handled with an on-site wastewater uh, disposal system. We do have a letter of feasibility from the health department for that, uh, for that uh, septic system. Um, the lot is located in a geologic hazard uh, area um, and as a condition of approval uh, we do need to have a notice of natural hazards re recorded on the property uh, which is just a notice for any potential future buyers that there are potential hazards um, to building in the area. And <clears throat> to date um, all review agencies have reviewed the project um, and have various uh, comments uh, for the applicant to satisfy before they record their plat. Uh, but its staff does recommend approval based on the conditions listed in the staff report and, uh, the, and the findings in the staff report as well. Do you have any questions for me on this one? No, I don't, thank you. Um, is, is the owner online or with us if they'd like to speak? Yes, Mark Banner is online with us. Yes, I'm listening, but I don't have any comments. Okay, sounds great. Is there anybody from the public, um, either here in person or on the Zoom call, that would like to speak about this item? All right. Scott, did, uh, did you mention that the uh, approved, the review agencies have, have all signed off on, on this project? We've all reviewed the project. There are some open conditions that are being worked through on the final uh, plat before we are allowing it to be printed to Mylar. Uh, but uh, everybody has a preliminary approval based on their first set of reviews. Okay. Great. And do we know, it, it, will there be um, the covenant for landscaping for the, the well? Mm -hmm. Do we know if there's going to be two dwellings or if there will be one at this point? So um, the way that uh, the exchange details reads, it allows for um, it allows for two equivalent dwelling units is how they calculate it. So there's one total acre foot that has been secured through that private well. And uh, basically one equivalent dwelling unit requires 0.45 of those uh, rights uh, to be used for culinary purposes. Um, so he can have two um, equivalent dwelling units. So he could, he could build a primary home and then uh, have an accessory dwelling unit um, and use that second EDU for the accessory dwelling unit, um, which would leave 0 0.10 acre feet of, of water for irrigation purposes. Um, and that calculates out to uh, just a hair under 1,500 square feet of non-drought tolerant landscaping. So they can zeroscape as much as they want, but uh, in order to irrigate, you know, uh, landscaping that needs constant irrigation, they can have up to uh, just a hair under 1,500 square feet of that. Um, but if they were to only use one of those um, equivalent dwelling units, then they would be able to have closer to 8,000 square feet of irrigation water if they don't dedicate the other water to a second uh, dwelling. So <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll have to 
verify with the applicant which way they want to go so we can record that covenant. But of course, the covenant is more of a notice because they can always secure more water and irrigate more uh, through that well. Um, all of the wells are going to have to be radio metered. So the Weaver Basin um, Water District will be able to see how much water is being used. And if they're exceeding their allotment, then they'll get a notice and they'll have to uh, acquire more water. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how the math shakes out. Okay, awesome. And, and when we're talking about these ERUs, we're meaning, um, I guess, structures that are detached from each other, dwellings that are detached from each other. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. The uh, the exchange details calls it an EDU, equivalent dwelling unit. Um, ERU is another acronym that we hear tossed around, and then ADU, accessory dwelling unit, is another acronym. But essentially, it's a dwelling unit, a, a detached, separate dwelling. Great. Okay, that makes sense. If they did, if they build one house and have decide they want to have close to eight thousand square feet of non drought tolerant landscaping, they can. If they ever propose an accessory dwelling unit that's detached, they'll likely have to get more water or take out some of that drought tolerant landscaping, it sounds like. That's right. Cool. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I will go ahead and approve this item based on um, Scott's presentation and the findings and conditions that are outlined in the staff report. We'll go ahead and go on to the next item. Before I do that, I'll mention um, there were notices that were sent out for one item on today's agenda that that's actually that didn't make it. Um, it's it was for Falcon Falcon Crest subdivision. And so if you're here or if you're online for that sub for that uh, Falcon Crest amendment, um, that will not be considered today. It was taken off of the agenda. Uh, we have a th the final item, item number three. LVB 062521, consideration and action on final plat approval of Blaine A. Hadley Farms subdivision consisting of three lots located at approximately 3220 South, 4300 West in Taylor. Scott, it looks like you're presenting this one. I am, yeah. Um, and actually, is, uh, is Marta able to allow me to share my screen? Yeah. Should be good. Okay. Right, you should be able to see the staff report here. Okay. So you should be able to see the, the plat. Um, so this is final uh, plot approval for the Blaine Hadley Farm subdivision. It's a three lot subdivision uh, located in the A2 zone at approximately 3230 South and 4300 West. Uh, the total project area is 9.88 acres and they're splitting that acreage into three lots. Uh, the smallest of which is 1.9 acres and then the largest is 5.3. Um, <clears throat> And in the A2 zone, the minimum acreage is uh, 40,000 square feet and 150 feet of width, which um, each of these meets those minimums for the zoning. Uh, culinary water for this subdivision is being provided by Taylor West Weber Water. Um, and we did clarify with Ryan Rogers, who is the manager of Taylor West Weber, Weber Water, that their culinary water may be used for secondary purposes with this subdivision um, until such a time that uh, pressurized secondary is made available. So they do have that, uh, that approval to use um, from the culinary water provider. Um, it does require that they transfer some shares over to uh, Taylor West Weber, um, water shares of Hooper Irrigation or Wilson Irrigation, which will then be held by Taylor West Weber until pressurized secondary is made available, and then they can transfer those shares back over and connect to the secondary system once it's, once it's extended to this location. Um, sanitary sewer uh, is, is to be handled by on-site on wastewater disposal systems, and we do have a septic feasibility letter from the health department for those. And we also have um, approvals through each of the review agencies on this plot as well. Uh, but we do recommend approval of this subdivision uh, based on the the uh, 
conditions and findings in the staff report, uh, but happy to answer any questions on this if you have any. Thanks, Scott. Is the owner with us or online? Oh, awesome. Cool. <laughs> Would you like to speak about this at all? No, 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 no. We have anything more to say. Great. Is anybody online um, that would like to speak about this item? Okay. One thing I will mention is I've had uh, I have had a conversation with uh, an adjacent landowner who um, it sounds like may be part of the ownership of no. this lot. No. Okay, that's not the case. Okay. No. Imposter. Gotcha. So um, and and that's why we require title reports so we can verify who's all part of the ownership. Um, and also we've got our surveyor's office and our, our mappers that also look at ownership. Um, Scott, have you, I know notices were sent out, is that right? That's right, yep. Okay, any any um, letters or any comments, any public comment that you've received on this? I haven't received any comments to date, nope. Okay. And I'm glad to see that um, this already has a final approval from Taylor West Weaver Water. That's a good thing to have. Um, and have have our reviewers um, signed off on this, Scott? Uh, they have. There's a couple of conditions, obviously, of approval that will require to be complete before they print the mylar and record the mylar. But yeah, they're they're approved through the agency reviews. Okay, sounds good. Well, I will go ahead and approve this item based on Scott's presentation and the findings and conditions that are in the staff report. Um, we don't have any other items on this agenda, um, so I will go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Thanks for attending. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Scott. See you.